for example, another member from Magic the Gathering that came over too. Yeah, there's a that's the thing. Like, I really want those players to to be established in the scene because it's nice to see that you know the knowledge they've got about the general you know general knowledge about card games, like you know tempo and understanding when to go all in, um, playing their odds and whatnot. Those are things that you can always see in good Hearthstone players, and those skills are transferable. So. Like, the, the lineups for both players, I mean, Life Coach is uh, the most predictable Hearthstone player ever when it comes to Declas. He's got Surprise, Druid, Warlock, Warrior, with his Warrior banned by Ivan, and Ivan brought Paladin, Shaman, Warlock, and Life Coach banned the Shaman. So, that that's that's one hell of a surprise for me. Yeah, I think he's seen that his opponent really likes playing aggro, and Life Coach really likes shutting it down. So, if he's bringing Mech Shaman, it's really good against Druid and Warlock. Um, if he's playing handlock. So I think that's an excellent choice. And Ivan will still have a pretty good opportunity to be aggressive with uh, Zulok and an aggro paladin. That's what I'm predicting out of him. But um, you know, maybe he changes it up today and realizes that he becomes a little bit too predictable himself playing aggro, so he can just go ahead and play control. Because yeah, last I mean, time he was playing Freeze Mage, right? And uh, he's kinda, yeah, he, he was. He, Ivan mixes it up very regularly, so I think... Uh, It'd be good to go more of an aggro today. Yeah, I mean, if it works out and like Life Coach has no idea what to expect, then it could work. Like, if Life Coach was expecting mid range shaman, you still try to counter it since, again, mm -hmm. you know, handlock is kind of weak to it. Druid isn't exactly an auto win and warrior either. Like, all those totems really add up to be to be an issue. So, shaman is, although it's, it's an uncommon ban, it's still probably an optimal one from Life Coach's perspective. Yeah, I think so as well. I think so as well. Um, I, I think starting off with the Warlock would also be good for Life Coach, giving his Druid more chances. If you know your opponent's classes are such things, I think the worst matchup would be... Actually, if he's playing Handlock and his opponent's playing Aggro Paladin, that's probably the worst matchup. Divine Favor in that... Yeah, it's actually the. I was gonna say this is a. Uh, it's a really. It's not that good of a matchup for the handlock. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can weather down the early aggression, sure, you'll be fine. The problem is when that divine favor is hit, then suddenly, you're in for a lot of trouble. And even against a regular paladin, quote unquote, like mid range or a control pally, um, mm -hmm. the board wise they can pull off can be really problematic. Now they all they won't get the immediate board tempo that you can't deal with, but they can always wipe yours and then you know weather you down over the course of multiple turns. Yeah. All yeah, right, sure. so in the game already, the players have already started. Ivan played a zombie chow and life coach with his druid, has the innervate, and not much else. So Ivan playing a mid-range pally, it seems. Yeah, and I, I oh, that's pretty good. He's played aggro, he's played control, and now he's playing mid -range. Happens to be very conveniently powerful against... Um, well, a druid that doesn't have wild growth. Yeah, he but still has innervate though to fix the curve. Yeah, I think Harrison Jones might also be a very strong card for him. Like, if only yeah. for the card draw. It's not even for the weapon removal necessarily. Not necessarily. Like, he might just opt for a cog hammer play after attacking to that four six. Yeah, Cockheimer seems to be the best course of action. You could also go Peacekeeper if you want to go for board tempo. That's, that's actually not too bad. Um, but one thing that is nice about Cockheimer is that most likely you'll be able to answer any threat yet again because you have Divine Shield number two. And yeah, I think, the, I think play, the reapplication of Divine Shield is the biggest selling point of it. Yes. And... Uh, also, because you're anticipating something like the Pilot Shredder, so next turn, um, you know, you can be able to address that as well and develop something else. Oh, wow. All right, so Ivan here's got to make the decision of whether or not he wants to use the Chow for trading or he wants to... I think you want to keep that Divine Shield. But how much do you want it? I mean, I, like, I feel like trading away the Chow now is better because you're not going to have to waste it later and you're still going to get Divine Shield value no matter what you do. Yeah, it's good. It threatens, um, it threatens like blessing of kings, just in right. case uh, he, you know, he's complacent about taking off the shield. And then if he plays pilot shredder, it's just dangerous. But uh, life coach has nothing really else to do here. 
Swipe has to be saved for a muster for battle, and Savage Roar doesn't do anything in this spot. So it's a hero power to the Divine Shield, but it's worth evaluating the next couple turns. Is it worth using Harrison on that? Do you wait for Chew Silver? Do you play Drew to the Claw based off what he can do on turn four? Um, Drew to the Claw might be able to be answered because he might have six power or more. It's a lot of questions going through Life Coach's mind. I, I remember because one time... I was like asking life coach to just walk me through a turn while he was practicing and it was like super long and crazy. Even more than his stream. Like oh my god, you know, Ivan can't really play. Um I mean like Ivan if he plays muster, let's say he attacks with a weapon and then plays muster for battle. Let's assume he does that. The threat of quartermaster will force life coach to wait until he plays Harrison Jones. So he might just get two cards instead of four out of it. If Ivan ends up going for that, of course. Yeah. I have to imagine he will, though. I'd be very yeah. surprised if he hero powered. Muster is just like a better play on the board. It allows you to address any five drop as well next turn. Yeah, and it's forcing your opponent to have the answer. Like, which is, in, in the case of Druid, it's pretty much Swipe or Starfall most of the time. Yeah. So. I and mean, if Life Coach oh, didn't man. have Swipe here, wouldn't that just be a problem? Yeah. So now he recognizes that, you know, Quartermaster comes out, it's not worth doing the Harrison Jones. He'll draw one less card. Oh my god. Is he going to ask the same question again? <laughs> he can squeeze into hero power. Yeah, and Life Coach, even if he gets card draw, is still going to need exactly... I mean, do you want to wait for turn 8, though? Thing is, if you do that, then you're kind of, you know, killing your Tyrion, killing your Leon Hands plays. And I don't think he's just going to play an Aldor ever for Tempo. So I, I think well, he's got to redo it, right? He's got, he's got the coin. So on 7 mana, he can go that combo. But I think it's still better to go for this, because you can squeeze into hero power now. And it's unlikely he has swipe number 2. Yeah. And, you know, one of the best ways to draw swipe number two is to Harrison Jones, a true, <laughs> a light's justice. No. Could that ever be a consideration? Um, that or it's Pilot Shredder and Hero Power a 1-1. One, one. I mean, Harrison he Jones is isn't too bad, right? Though. Because if Quartermaster comes out, Harrison is still killing two of those 1-1s, one, one, so you can kind of view him as um, a removal piece in that way. Unless your opponent has True Server Champion off the top. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, Outdoor Peacekeeper. Oh, man. I wouldn't like to be in Life Coach's position here. Like, the, the card draw is really tempting, but at the same time, you know you might just be digging your own grave by going for it. Time waits for no one. Yeah, I think Shredder killing a 1-1 one -one is probably the most consistent play. Mm. Force of Nature is just, I think Force of Nature is still a stable one, right? Because you're guaranteed not to get swept. Like, the game is going to drag on longer than you'd like, and you're only going to get, you know, three cards from Harrison, whoop de doo um, But it's still consistent enough to justify doing. Yeah, but if, you know, if he coins Quartermaster, he still gets two three threes. I guess it's better than three of three threes. Yeah. I was really leaning over towards the um, Pilot Shredder. And you would have four right now, right? Oh, you're right. You would have had That would have four. been so insane. Yeah, Life Coach was so he really playing around Quartermaster, like, heavily. And he's right. His, his fears have been justified. It's, now it's a situation where, uh, well, he can't exactly take it down as easily as he wants to. So is Life Coach just going to have to wait for Harrison to be used on a True Silver and in, in the meantime just play maybe Paladin, Shredder, and Shade and kind of play it slowly? Or is I Harrison mean, Jones True too Silver, tempted? Stealing the True Silver and converting it to cards is actually an incredible tempo play. Um, right. And gives you good card draw too. Um, it's just tempting to draw more cards with Harrison because of what you could do. You could pick up Wrath, stabilize the board a little bit more. And you have Ragnaros. Innervate next. as well for Paladin Shredder. There's a second one left in the deck, so again, that could be good. You're right. So next turn you have a couple of Rath, plays to you with Drew the Claw Shade as well as Rag. Life Coach picks up none of these. A complete whiff. Not even a Wild Growth to set up a Force of Nature Savage Roar. Not even that. 
Well, that's kind of dry for life coach. Oh, there it is. There's a good draw. I feel like uh, Ivan actually has been floundering a little bit on the draws, um, not going exactly the way he's wanted to. And that Lothab is very nice, assuming that his opponent doesn't have um, any way to answer the board easily, like with Wraths. With a damage on board, you're not really in any position to start pushing for damage. So you still have to play the trading game. Like I, I like Aldor Peacekeeper into double trade, but even though it's it's kind of weak as you only play hero power on the back of it, um, but it allows you to curve into Tyrion with a board to protect oh, behind it, and you're forcing your opponent to have Keeper of the Grove. So again, he's kind of slowing down his big minion curve after he played Tyrion. Yep. Yeah, it's true, and Lothab is better later on against Druid that tries to go for a combo finish. Mm -hmm. All face. SM work. You know I'm all about that face. About that face. So I actually listened what? to that song for the first time yesterday, and it was awesome. Which song? Um, the Nicki Minaj parody about the parody. I didn't, I didn't see the. Oh, is that Nicki Minaj? I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I couldn't tell you. All I know is I. I know the. I've been singing that on my stream for a while now. <laughs> it's like whenever I see a hunter. Mm -hmm. All right. So life coach. Do you ever just drop Ragnaros and pray? Like, is that ever a play? Um, like, you attack the one one because then you're kind of vulnerable to true silver. Is my guess. Like, yeah. if it doesn't kill. You could die to a lot of things. Yeah, um, a lot of things kill you. Consecration, choose over. I think it's very unsafe, unfortunately. I think Drew the Claw plus Shea next Ramos is the play here. Or Shredder? No, actually, yeah, you're right. He's on eight. Never mind. Uh, and shade, yeah. Yeah. Well, if it gets answered by Tyrion, well, you still have the cure. Yeah. Yeah. You can Iron Beak Owl, but I mean, are you pushing for lethal? No. You, with that, you don't have it. Exactly. With True Silver, he would have it. Like, True Silver Consecration are actually lethal, I think. Okay. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty good at being wrong. Uh, at least you're willing to admit it, so you're a good man for it. But now Ivan, not getting a lethal, also has to play the defensive game. The thing is, he doesn't really have to play the defensive game if he plays Lothab. Like, he can actually push for damage with the Iron Beak and not have to play around uh, the combo, because anyway, it's unlikely to happen. Oh man, he's going to be super aggressive about this. Does he, does he make trades or does he just push? Oh my god! Yeah, he's Ivan kind of is... impatient about it. Well, I mean, well, what how... does Druid do? He yeah, was so much damage on the board. Not really Ancient anything. Of lore and right? I guess Ancient of Lore and you heal yourself, but that's about it. There's also an argument to be made for Keeper of the Groving yourself. Yes. Um, there's no Pilot Shredder to try to save you on the one, one offer. If you Savage Roar, do you survive? Don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it's so. Like he's either. dead. Yeah, that's a uh, rest. I mean, life coach Azure Drake into defend of Argus. Would that save him? If that Lothab was something else. Yeah, exactly. Of the nature of Savage War would have killed him. Mm hmm. Yeah, which is why I like Ivan's decision to really be aggressive with the Lothab. Like, the locking down that, that turn really. Because usually when you're in a situation like this and you don't have Lothab, what scares you the most is you have to start trading, even though you're close to lethal, because he could just retaliate with a one two punch, right? Lothab blocks that possibility out, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's really funny that it just ends up working out this way. Really good spot by Ivan, and that's gonna wrap up the first game. That was very well played on the Paladin's end. Um, sticking true to what makes Paladin good in this matchup, being able to seize the tempo, be aggressive on the board, uh, not letting it go, because... You know, there's, there's times where Druid tries to do the same exact thing to you, and if you're more aggressive than they are, then um, they can't really do anything back because you have too right. much health on the board. So they have to choose one, either clear the board or be aggressive back. And in that position, Druid was not ready to be aggressive. So a very good situational understanding um, by Ivan, and he closes out the game 1-0. Yeah, if he gets this one, I mean, it's at least going to be a possible uh, a complete match versus a life coach, which is no small feat.
you know, it's a very common situation. But yeah. Life Coach actually brought a Kazan Mystic. We saw it at the very end there in the Druid deck. So he might have been expecting Ivan to bring a Hunter like he's done every single time. But Ivan switched up his game, and there was no Hunter. So that Kazan Mystic yeah. was... Yeah, if he if Life Coach put that in other decks, that's also another dead card. Yeah, he's gonna have to win with Kazan Mystic against Warlock twice, and that that might be tricky. Um, Ivan looks like he's capable of playing any style, any kind of aggro or mid range or control or combo, and that's really hard because this this Warlock deck. Well, Warlock can play anything. Actually, I think every archetype is viable with uh, Warlock. You can be aggressive. You certainly can play control in mid range. Right. And with Mali Ghost now out, I think combo is viable too. I think the only thing you can't play is like a fatigue Warlock. I don't think that works. <laughs> you know what? That would be funny though. Like uh, seeing a fatigue Warlock deck one day where Life Tap actually returns cards from your 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 board to your your deck instead. Um, That'd be kind of cool. Just change your hero power to that. Yeah, well, imagine if there's a reverse Akanai, right? Then oh, man, that would be so insane. Well, I mean, I think Mistress of Pain was supposed to be something that makes that work for Warlocks. They don't yeah, run huh? any life gain from, like, board states, really. That'd be really funny if Mistress of Pain allowed Warlock to play Fatigue style. Sounds like a good mission for you to do something on your stream now. <laughs> life go go test, fatigue. and next time we cast <laughs> Yeah, together, sure. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Oh man, I've been bringing back the Dark Iron Dwarf. Cool. I'm liking it. It's been a while since I've seen that guy in any competitive deck. It's interesting considering that Void Caller is so strong and Implosion is really powerful, and you still mm. want to play Defender. So, just how many four drops are you willing to go for? I think he's not playing Void Caller. My guess is this is not a Demon Zoo, it's just kind of a classic zoo. Okay, fair enough. So There's also the those. room for being an extremely aggressive zoo, too. So you cut the top curve and you just get as much damage in as you can. I mean, we did see Soulfire, so again, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think you're right. He's just on the very aggressive end of the zoo oh, spectrum. What with the Soulfires there? Something you don't really see much anymore mm -hmm. in the zoo at all. I mean, that means he's got to be running Dark Bombs, right? If he's running Soulfire, he's running Dark Bombs. Life coach not innervating out of the shade yet. No, I think you have you don't know enough about your opponent's deck to make that call. If you know it's aggressive, then you even want to innervate the keeper as a priority here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be careful with uh with a good like just a flame imp would be enough to make you want to innervate keeper. Mm hmm now, Life Coach most likely will want to silence this, and mm. then it actually dies to double abusive sergeant. And that's going to be a little painful, considering that Life Coach was really going to be hoping that uh, this keeper goes at least two for one. At least it uh, goes into turn three, right? He was at least hoping right. that, that the Keeper of the Grove would make it to the next turn. Well, sometimes Keeper of the One can three for one, um, Keeper of yeah. the Grove, because it can kill a minion and then trade with two of them. But in this case, it'll trade with one. Um, and the Innervate, Ivan... actually. It wasn't even that, that. That's how bad it was. It actually ate up the Innervate. Yes. Although Ivan could greedily go for Haunted Creeper and then try to go for juggle pops the following turn too and then that sets up a, a better dark iron dwarf on the following turn um not to mention that your your curve is also well protected i still think going for double abusive is the best because keeper the grove gets the least value but i could also see a line that goes haunted creeper if you want to take it slow yeah life force is kind of forced to play the uh life force is gonna have to play his shade Oh, that's a really good pickup for Life Coach, though. Like, this swipe, he was fine with the Wrath and Hero Power, right? Carrying him a little bit. But the swipe is going to really smoothen that curve up. That's perfect. Um, the one thing you are concerned about is Implosion. Because you swipe and then Implosion comes out on four. I'm a little bit sad. But yeah, you don't right. even have to swipe now. You can actually just Hero Power Wrath for one. Wait, wait for the results. Because again, Implosion is such a big threat. If you attack into it, Implosion is guaranteed to kill your Shade. Because the Shade would kill the Haunted Creeper and you swipe the face. Yeah. 
And I actually don't like that play very much to go for the swipe for the, mm. the face because I know the possibility of implosion. Yeah. So I wouldn't blame Life Coach to go for a Hero Power Wrath. But it's such a good card. Like picking up swipe here, like it makes his turn six so much easier to weave in because he was looking at a Wrath, you know, Hero Power on four and then five Jew to the Claw. So the six is like, that's where his dead turn was at that point. And there's very few cards that are going to fill up that, you know, turn six very nicely um, when you're playing against a Zoo deck. So this is one. This is one of the few, if not the only one, I think. Oh, as you said, I think the wrath for hero power, like the wrath hero power here, is probably the most sensible play. I mean, the if he goes for a swipe play, there's nothing to answer directly other than um, an iron beak owl onto the shade. So he's yeah. correct there if he chooses to go for the play. It's just is that the highest percentage play? And I don't think so. And that's why life coach goes for this wrath play, and he's. He's semi rewarded with a second wrath. Like, cycling the wrath is always <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it's like you also want it to remove clean, like killing a knife juggler behind a taunt. And in this case, he gets a second wrath. And what's really nice about getting it immediately is that Ivan often won't play around the second wrath if the situation comes up. Um, so, do, do you like the swipe here a lot better, right? Like, I don't know if the swipe turn has come yet. Like, it looks sweet. But Jiro the Claw uh -huh. might just be straight up better after killing the Dark Iron Dwarf. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Jiro the Claw here is also okay because you follow the curve. Mm -hmm. And he already used both Abusive Sergeants, so he has to go with Power Overwhelming or Second Dark Iron Dwarf. And those are also really unlikely um, or wasteful. Mm -hmm. And also he wants him to Implosion first. <laughs> like this is the time to Implosion and then trade. Yeah, and life coach is like, please do, please do implode to your heart's content. Oh man, so knife juggler, M gang boss. That's a possibility. The R and B cal is likely not going to get played here. It makes no sense. I mean, the juggler I could see since you're going to pop the the creeper anyway. I mean, that just seems like a logical. Uh, Follow up. So You'd have to trade your Dark Iron Dwarf first, though, if you do that. Yeah, it is a little bit scary to think about what could happen if these juggles don't hit. If you leave <laughs> yeah, no, a really one health me. minion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That, that's the situation where nothing you do really feels good to you. Yeah. Imp King Boss and Ruby Neg is super defensive, but it makes your board a lot more resilient. He taps. Whoa. Is he just going to start punching face already? Oh man, he's true to his deck design. Just SM Orc. This is it. This is the most aggressive play I've ever seen coming from a zoo player, I think. It's it's up there. Without the you know the double power of whelming, that's that is some mm -hmm. unusual line of play there well now uh it can get punished pretty heavily uh life coach can swipe this confidently now because mm -hmm. his opponent used a lot of resources and going to the face usually indicates that he has a lot of damage that he wants to go for and dark iron dwarf makes sense align with that too it's like okay dark iron dwarf means your deck naturally wants to be more aggressive so you probably don't have as many board control mechanisms as you as you might. You, you even might have chargers. Yeah. So you know, I have to take care of this now. I've got to say, I think Ivan might have uh, gotten mind games by Life Coach earlier turn where he played Wrath Hero Power instead of popping the, the Creeper and swiping. He might have thought to himself, well, he might just not have the swipe. That would have been an okay... Oh, oh man, what a, what a whiff. What a, that, that was That's... just the worst. Uh-oh. Oh, this is wow. getting scary. <laughs> Jeez, this is getting uh, really scary. That's seventeen damage. Okay, uh, he can wrath and then just play the pilot shredder and hit the face. There's no way Zoo with four cards is doing seventeen damage on seven mana. Yeah, I don't think There's so. no way. You have to have if you have two power overwhelmings and doom guard. Power overwhelming, power overwhelming. Yeah, it's he doesn't enough. have the mana for it. Yeah, exactly. So you need like double soul fire with double power whelming and an extra card to discard for perfect RNG. This yeah. looks like a really old school zoo deck. Like it's looking like you know the earlier classical zoos after Nax Realms came out, um, with the hunt creepers. 
and the soul fire and the Nerubian egg. That's kind of what it reminds me of, like card for card. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it looks pretty classical with uh, how it's able to grab board and be really aggressive. It's just funny that soul fire costs one and doesn't even allow him to tap. But tapping would actually be death, so we can't even do that. So life coach evens up the series. The druid able to take a game. Coming out strong here. Yeah, so Ivan still has to win with a Zulog, but Life Coach has seen everything in it, including the Dark Iron Dwarves and the Argent Squire, so he knows it's probably not going to be a Demon Zoo. Um, so knowing that, obviously you're not as afraid of stuff like Void Caller. You're, like, you're, still, you're still not out of the woods um, with all the stuff that Zoo can do, but it's already looking a bit better than it might have been before that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think Strife Crow was like... Or not Strife Crow series. Who played the Druid that um, that was struggling? Was it Strife Crow? Here? It was Life different. Oh, it was, a, it was a life coach. No, no, no. I, a different, in this different series, we were watching a druid player, and it felt Strife like... Strife Crow, I think, was falling behind. Yeah. Okay. If I'm not well, mistaken. Um, but either way, there's another druid player that was, like, struggling to grab that early board, but it just shows you what druid needed to get. Oh, that was Kang. Yeah, that was Kang, actually. Oh, Kang, yes, Kang, Kang. That's Kang, exactly right. what it was. But he um, got it in the end, I think. Yeah. Um, we, we had a really good start from the druid. Innervate right. Keeper into Shade into rat, Double Wrath Swipe. Mm -hmm. That's what it takes to beat a deck like that. Um, because the board control from Ivan was... There early on, just he lost it because of too much value from Druid. And now what's really important is Life Coach knows what type of Warlock deck this is. So he can mulligan really well. In fact, this hand is looking... It's almost godlike, yeah. I was going to say, do you ever throw is, anything away here? Maybe the Defender to get a Dark Bomb or a Giant or Drake, but... Well, you don't want the Mountain Giant because you're going to be tossing away, but the Molten Giant yeah. would be pretty good. However, Molten Giant's only as good as your taunts in an aggressive matchup because mm -hmm. you're at 10 health and you play a Molten Giant and they just go past the Giant. Yeah, I wouldn't throw anything there, maybe. Well, he did throw the Ancient Watcher and the Defend of Argus, so he's keeping the Owl and the Mortal Coil again. Those keeps make a lot of sense. And Ivan with a pretty solid hand. Oh. Yes. Uh, Life Coach... Luckily, he's going to pass. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious. I think he just really wanted Dark Bomb and AoE. If he gets Hellfire, I think his thought is I can just win mm -hmm. because I have AoE and a lot of ways to stabilize. But unfortunately, it's never that easy, Life Coach. So here, playing the Creeper allows him to tap on three and then uh, play a one drop if he wants it. Oh, uh, well, I think he might consider silencing the... The creeper, the creeper right away. and then coin drake mountain giant's sort of dead in this matchup although one thing to consider is that mountain giant like so if your opponent starts off really slow ready. you can even afford to sometimes tap and relax because if they play void walker into nerubian egg into imking boss that's that's like eight damage in three turns that they're gonna do so you can usually take your time but flame imp is a lot so he has to be really careful to tread this line. I anticipate him coining out the, the Twilight Drake next turn. Oh, wow. I even hear, like, he might be thinking, if I just vomit my hand here, I'm going to play into Hellfire. But how much do you think he cares? Is he just going to life tap and play a one drop? Or Yeah, I think that's certainly a very good option here. Abusive Sergeant and Power Overwhelming's damage is, is transferable, whether or not you play it, play it now or later. Um... The only advantage of playing Abusive Sergeant now is that you get an extra damage with its body, but you're not anticipating too much. Handlock has so many ways to deal with it. Removals, AoEs, Mortal Coils. Yeah, um, so if you don't play the Abusive, you're actually not even giving your opponent the Mortal Coil option. So, again, that's pretty good. Right. And he's just going to go for Argent Squire. Now, like, this board is really sweet for Ivan, because even if a Giant at any point would come out, the Abusive and PO should be able to take care of it. Like, even a Drake, like, it's a good defense, but how good? Well, it's pretty good. Um, and if Life Coach can get mileage out of this Azure Drake, or Twilight Drake, whatever, the Dragon Guard, then <laughs> it would be okay, but there is a lot of ways to buff and do damage to it. On the flip side, Ivan might just go past his Drake, because there's yeah. no taunt. But Shadow Flame... Like, aren't you a little worried about Shadow Flame? I would be, being Ivan. 
Um, you, but it's like the same comparable loss of damage. If you lose the sh if you lose minions because of Shadow Flame, how much damage do you lose trading into it? Because if you do eight damage into the Drake right now, versus yeah, you'd have to PO lose, and then abuse yeah. of the the creeper. I mean, it depends on your hand. I think you always have to evaluate it. And right now, there's five damage on board, and you want to play Dark Iron Dwarf, and there's seven damage available. I think mm -hmm. if you put put seven damage to the face, force him to Shadow Flame, takes his entire turn. Yeah, but then Molten, right? Like, no, you, no, you can't you, Shadow Flame and Molten. He's only at 14. Yeah, but you probably get worried about it just uh, like the, on the following turn. Where some of you protect her with a single Molten. I mean, I don't know how I'm looking at this from Ivan's perspective. I like the fact that he's playing Squires. I mean, th you know this whole I don't die to AoE approach that the old zoo used to have? Um, which isn't the case anymore. Wow, okay, so, you know, speaking about all that AoE, but Life Coach picked up absolutely nothing. He almost has to silence off the um, void walker so many ping a shield off and coil it uh why well, i assume you want to kill so the flame terrible. imp too the flame imp yeah. is really threatening i wouldn't mind silencing the one three almost anything that collides into it will be able to mortal coil mm -hmm. um the challenging aspect is that this is the only um owl that i think life coach runs he's generally a type of handlock player that likes to go for one owl and Use that extra flexible spot to do something else with his deck. Like have more late game threats, as you can see in his hand. Yeah. It's not a card that everybody plays, so again, it's... So he's going to go for the coil play, and he's just... Uh, Greedy. Picks up a Sun Fury, that might pay off. Wait, actually, is he dead? 3, 4, 5, five. plus... Uh, he's not quite dead. No, he's got 11 damage right now. Mm, yeah. Still alive, but honestly, it's all about like life coach being able to set up one wall of taunts, just the one, right? I just the one. Hmm. This turn's a little bit tricky. There's a lot of things that you want to do this um, this turn. You can set up knife juggler because clearly he couldn't deal with flame imp. If you knife juggler, but you also want to be careful about overextending, so you might want to trade well, into the board a little bit to avoid I Molten Giants. Wonder. How much over... Like The thing is, are you overextending if you didn't play any AoE last turn, right? Well, AoE last turn on the board kind of stunk. Of yeah, the, it was like the Arden Squires. The Arden Squires. Yeah. And if you just push his phase damage... Yeah, if he pushes face damage, now he's in danger of Molten Giant range. Yeah. This looks more like uh, he wants to go for... He's actually oh, he's done the calculation oh. into it, but... Interesting. Okay, so what's the reasoning here? You lose the Void Walker, you lose the Flame Imp, then you get taunted up behind Molten. So the, the Molten will die to Powerwhelming, Abusive huh. on something. There's some planning here that... Oh, wow, that could have been so good. Whoa, that's so coach. sick! Yeah. If he can get next turn, he can uh, Shadow Flame next turn. With some crazy damage potential. So, right. did Ivan calculate this properly? Because if he's got Abusive plus PO, he can go through both taunts. Like, we, we know that much. But he can't Doom Garden do that. Oh man, you're right. He's gonna be pretty close. Like he could go for knife drillers, see where the creeper pops, and just keep the doom guard. Oh wow. You know, I really like Ivan's uh, line of play because keeping abusive sergeant with two one attack minions allows him to get rid of the Drake, which was gonna kill the Void Walker, and the mm -hmm. power bombing on the four four kills the giant. It all like if that was deliberate and everything was planned, I really like Ivan's uh, thinking process there. So many. Yeah, for sure. And he can somewhat get away with it, too. Um, depends on how these juggles pan out. Power of Walming to leave the giant first. It's also a possibility. Um, there's a lot of options. If he just had one more mana, though. Right. It's one of those things where he's just so close to getting... 
like a game winning play, but having life tapped and not having had implosion then really changed things around. Mm -hmm. He's gonna really hope that this juggle doesn't uh, go on Drake. No, it goes to the face, and that's great. And what happened with that 2 2? Nothing, alright. So if it Shadow Flames, he can't heal, and then he's, uh, well, actually, never mind. No, he still can't taunt up if he goes for the Shadow Flame. No taunts, no, uh, no heal. Yeah, now I guess the question is, do you Shadow Flame the Watcher or do you Shadow Flame the Sun Fairy Protector? The Watcher doesn't actually do anything, so, but it is more health. <laughs> so if you end up taunting it up, yeah. I, I, I'm feeling like you Shadow Flame the Watcher, though. Yeah, I agree with you. Just because you can trade away that 2-2 like, if necessary, and uh, you mm. might be able to play the Mountain Giant by the point where so you need to taunt up again, or the Heal Bot with another Sun Fury, which is pretty much like your only way to really taunt up past mm. this point anyway. It's or like does, a five drop. does Life Coach feel confident enough to train to the Juggler and play like Heal Bot? That'd just be man mode. Or, I don't know, like, there's no way he plays, like, oh, Sylvanas. <laughs> it's, like, just way too overcome. This is, this is almost suicidal, yeah. I, I'm afraid I would never do that. So he's going to Shadow Flame the Watcher, it seems. Which, yeah. again, uh, seems like the best play at first sight. And Ivan oh, picks up... one damage off lethal. Do you go for it? Do you really have the choice? I mean, how does he handle Doomguard, right? If he healed bots, you still keep the Doomguard. Well, you can oh. implosion first. Forcing I'm surprised the he didn't implosion and then set up the dire wolf. Oh, I would have liked that better than Sav. Than terrible. That oh, oh man. My gosh. Life Two? coach is the happiest handlock ever. That Sun Fury pickup. That Sun Fury pickup. Mm -hmm. So Antique Heal Bot gives him time to stall because the following so turn he can Sylvanas and Sun Fury protect her. Mm hmm. Is, is there any play but Healbot? Like, is he considering Lotheb and Dr. Boom? I mean, Lotheb, it does, still, you still die to Doomguard unless you use Sun Fury on her. Um, her? Lotheb's a... him, sorry. Yeah, I don't know why I keep saying her. It's actually a... I mean, Lotheb kind of really looks ugly. like my history teacher from high school. And, Please don't. But, I don't want to know that, Pro Dad. <laughs> also sounded a little bit like her, too. Oh. I think Lotheb's a male. Really? Hit, That'd be the ultimate man. crazy, like, wow, it totally blew my mind. Lothab's a female type thing. No, no, it's not. I, it's just it's the, oh, oh. Uh, he taps. He's, he's going to have to heal bot. And then yeah, but like, 13 health, it's dangerous, he isn't he it? get away with it. Well, he can, can't he? Oh, wow. I mean, how much uh, can he, though? He can do 10 damage right now. Mm-hmm. So do you double Dire Wolf, trade one Imp away into the heal bot, and then move on with your life? Uh, well, you can just Dark Iron Dwarf one of them too. Sure. And then it's kind of it's kind of all the same, really. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The damage is somewhat transferable here. He's kept this Doomguard waiting for so long. Now, a second Molten Giant would be bananas here. Okay, he doesn't get it. And he's going to have to taunt up. Like, he has to. D does the Drake have more health than the Giant in this case? Um, nope. it, I almost think eight. it doesn't matter what he taunts up. I think he's dead either way. Uh, but from his perspective, he's got to be trying, right? Like he's yeah. got five, eight. Um, the other option is to tap into a molten giant and then go into a no Twilight Drake days. Sun Fury Protector. All right, so let's see if Sylvanas can actually get him out of this mess. The this only way he can get out of the mess, though, is if he plays Doomguard first. Okay, there's no way. Never. <laughs> Never there is that. just no way. Yeah, this is it. The imp goes. Wow. I expected so, the implosion first, just because. But that was actually like the perfect outcome. Now Doomguard comes into the middle for seven damage. Yeah, BGHable, but it's a bit too late. The life coach is gonna lose to Ivan, who's gonna take this series two one oh, against wow. one of the best. Life coach is crushed. Yeah, he's been like that very often recently. Whenever he loses, um, 
Uh, I think he's just, yeah, you know, he's starting to take the game so seriously in 2015 that um, he's starting to be human. He's human about Hearthstone. Yeah, well, I mean, he's first in points in Europe. He didn't yeah. finish... Um, he didn't finish in the top 100, and he's hoping these tournaments can really give him some points so he can pad his lead. And, you know, he's now 1-2, and two, so he's on the verge of not making the playoffs. Ivan is not making it, but uh, he definitely played the spoiler today for Life Coach. Uh, so yeah. Life Coach will have to play one more series. If he wins, he gets more points and more opportunities. But it's one more series that he's lost, so it's unfortunate. Yep. So we're going to be moving on shortly to the fifth match of the day. We're going to be taking a short break beforehand. It's going to be between Kufdon and Bunny Muffins. Kufdon is a, a South Korean player. We don't, uh, I mean, a Finnish player, South Korean, Finnish player that we don't know much about outside of the fact that he plays for uh, RC Tick Esports, if I recall. Um, mm. And he's been doing, you know, somewhat okay. An average result so far in the league. Uh, he qualified for this event, and uh, Bunny Muffin is a highlighter player, at least on NA. I haven't really seen him anywhere else on the other regions, but he's a really solid player. But his results so far probably don't match to what he wants. He's been going through qualifier after qualifier in the events, but he doesn't seem to get to the top of whatever event he's in. So... A little mad about that, but uh, the more he tries, eventually he'll seep through and maybe picked up by a team. In the meantime, we'll be taking a short break, and uh, we'll be right back. 